My name is Kat, this is Kitty Cat Thing, and today I want to talk about fiction. If it wasn't clear enough by now, I am a huge fan of fiction. The fact that in these places anything can happen, well, that fascinates me. And another thing you've probably already guessed about me is I'm one of those people that loves to show their emotions on their face. I mean, not necessarily a bad thing, you know, when I'm on stage I can turn it off, I can, you know, just do my scene. But when I'm just being me, especially when I'm really, really into a piece of fiction, I, I cry. A lot. About everything. So why is it that these things that are so blatantly false get to me so deeply? And why do I love them? Isn't that a bad thing? Well, there's this thing called the suspension of disbelief, which according to Wikipedia is a willingness to suspend one's critical faculties in order to believe the unbelievable. A sacrifice of realism and logic for the sake of enjoyment. Now, that's a lot of big words in mumbo-jumbo for the idea that human beings can shove down that annoying voice in the back of our heads that's going, HEY! THIS ISN'T REAL! At least while we're immersed in the thing. And that's pretty neat. <laughs> if you're still not clear on what the suspension of disbelief is, think about Les Mis, either the book or the show or the movie. Les Mis is a story that takes place in revolutionary France. And while we're all enjoying it, crying, singing along, we don't question the fact that these people in revolutionary France are speaking English? We do this with a lot of movies. We ignore the fact that they're not speaking their own native language, that these native Frenchmen are not speaking French. We take for granted the fact that we can under understand the story. That's part of suspension of disbelief. We ignore this factual error so that we can focus more on what's happening, the revolution happening in front of us. Tomorrow comes! Our brains ignore the fact that we shouldn't be able to understand what's going on in favor of understanding the story. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so now you know what the suspension of disbelief is, but why? Well, according to Norman Holland, who is a psychological critic, there is a neurological reason behind this. See, when we get really, really invested in a piece of fiction, like really, really into it, the systems in our brain that control planning and action and the reality of the world around us turn down a little bit, and we go into something called perceiving mode, which is basically an autopilot. We, as human beings, have to make a conscious effort to believe that something's false. If we're not thinking about it, say halfway through a boss battle in our game, our brains pick it up as a real situation. This is what triggers that can't put the book down effect. It's literally our brains going red alert, red alert, red alert, until we hit a loading screen or a blank page, which is jarring enough to start back up those logical, more realistic parts of our brain. Now, J.R.R. Tolkien had a slightly different but adjacent idea, which was secondary belief. This is the idea of creating a consistent universe inside a piece of fiction, one that plays by its own rules that we're allowed to look in on. This is what he did with the Lord of the Rings series, and what J.K. Rowling did with the Harry Potter series, and what a lot of authors do. They created their own universes. In doing this, an author can make even the most ridiculous thing make sense because it follows the contextual rules of its own universe, which is completely different from our own. Basically, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love the idea that someone can create their own universe with its own characters and creatures, and that these characters and creatures can be so well-written and so well-performed that I have empathy for them, that I fall in love with them, I legitimately care what happens to them, and I think that shows off some real-world magic that human beings are capable of. And that's about all I've got for you today. The main reason I wanted to make this video was because I'm playing Undertale over on my gaming channel, and it's reminded me how much I love well-written stories and interesting characters and blatant abuse of fourth wall breaking. <laughs> I'll link to the playthrough somewhere here on the end screen, but yeah, that's about it for today. So, see you soon! It shows their emotions on their face all the time. And my brother is sneezing in the next- Ben, stop. Are you done? Ben! Recording is fun. Anyway. <laughs> you like the new camera? It's good, yeah? It's good. I just got it.